We've come to Bristol Airport in the West Country because this was one of the first airports in the country to embrace the foreign holiday boom. When it opened in 1957, this airport handled 33,000 passengers. By 1973, almost 300,000 people were checking in. And today, it's one of Britain's top 10 biggest airports outside London, along with the likes of Dublin, Manchester, Birmingham, and Edinburgh. Until the 1970s, most British people holidayed at home in places like Blackpool. Dads were more likely to be seen sporting a knotted hanky than a sombrero. And although package holidays can be traced back as far as 1841, they were almost exclusively the preserve of the rich and the well-heeled. Then at the end of the 60s, a combination of cheap fuel prices and the invention of the first jumbo jet made mass foreign travel accessible to all. By 1970, more than five million people in Britain could boast a foreign holiday. For tour operators, it was boom time. The largest one was Clarkson's, credited for turning Benidorm into Blackpool with Sun and the package holiday revolution was upon us. Good morning. My guests today have come from around the country with special stories to tell about package holidays. Some will be seeing the films we're about to screen for the first time, showing us their holiday photos. My first romance. <laughs> <laughs> and revealing what it was like to be part of that 70s package holiday revolution. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Leslie Meredith and her brother Martin Hancock from Cheshire have travelled here today because when they were growing up, their family was one of the first to take advantage of the new package holiday boom. Just looking back, things weren't always as you expected, yeah. like changing the hotel on you at the last minute and all those little things. Didn't seem to get in the way once you got yeah, settled you in. Yeah, you forgot about those yeah. things. Once you've got the sun on your back. <laughs> once you're there, it doesn't matter, does <laughs> it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. We were the first in your family to take these holidays abroad. We were, we were. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not many people in the street went away. Now, what have you brought? Well, that's walking around uh, Tunis, uh, capital oh. Tunisia. Me and my Kylie shorts, not a good look. <laughs> not in Tunis. <laughs> and they were coming out they were coming out of the, the oh, bars to watch yeah, me yeah. and uh, I didn't know any better because I'd been to I Spain. You walk it, yeah. around in a bikini and shorts in Spain, but you don't do it in Tunis and no one told me. But so, you weren't arrested. Uh, so good I was nearly arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it Typical caused tourist. a stir, to say the least. <laughs> Martin and Leslie have dragged out some long-forgotten home movies from the attic, movies they haven't watched in years. They brought them along today. Here's Leslie, age 19, and Martin, age 6. What memories will these family holidays to Tunisia and Spain bring back for them? We'd always gone to the south of England, and it was something new, an adventure. Nobody else I knew went abroad. It was just something that people didn't do. I was so excited. I used to count down the hours, I used to make a little chart of all the hours and just count them down, ready to go away. Yeah, go away, it's brilliant. And it felt different. You were experiencing something new. Here are Leslie and Martin in their own home movie, shot on a Super 8 camera. From the 70s onwards, cameras like this meant that holidaymakers could preserve their trips abroad forever. It was just wonderful, all those memories. My mum making everyone laugh, because she used to do. And just, just, you've got so many memories, but they're tucked away and you just need something like that to let them surface again. It was just lovely. Watching their home movie of a holiday abroad reminds Leslie and Martin of the days when sunbathing was a serious matter. You just go and you sizzle. You would go to the local supermarket, buy a bottle of lemon and olive oil, and you would slap it all over and lie there baking. Sometimes it was vinegar. So you <laughs> smelt like a chip cooking. 
I always used to try and get a bit of a suntan, even as a kid, thinking, I really need to get brown so that I can go to school, because I know when I go to school, everybody's going to be, wow, check you out, where have you been? I had no sun cream on, and I thought, I'll be all right. I had massive blisters across both shoulders. It was really, really painful. And my mother had to just smother uh, calamine lotion all over my shoulders and stay out the sun for the next three or four days. A holiday romance was a perk of the packaged holiday, and Leslie remembers her first encounter with the Latin Lothario in Spain. The Spanish boys, they loved the English girls. And there was a guy in a bar local, and he asked if he could take me out to a disco. I said, OK, I'll, I'll come. But he stunk a garlic. <laughs> Everybody stunk a garlic. But we weren't used to that, you see. Um, but I only went out with him the once. My first romance abroad. Mm -hmm. Package holidays abroad were relatively cheap in the 70s. Leslie and her family were quick to take full advantage. First holiday was 1973 abroad and it was to Calella in Spain, and it cost my dad 63 pound. Full board, 63 pound, can you imagine that? Leslie's mum, Gwen, died 16 years ago, so seeing her family all together on holiday in the 70s reminds Leslie how precious their time together really was. My dad did three jobs at a time, just so that we could go away. And actually, my mum had got a heart defect, so my dad was sort of a live-for-today type of person. So he'd save like crazy so we could all go away as a family, because we never knew if there was going to be another time. So very important for us family holidays, and lovely to look back on now. 